hello, everybody. Yes, it's Wednesday again at 8 p.m., and we are the Gun Cranks Live. I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat, along with Tom McHale, the editor of American Handgunner, and our boss, Roy Huntington. Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> hello. How are you guys? Here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's great, and we're glad you could join us. It's uh, turning into a, a quite a a gathering we we have here every e uh, Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern. So we're glad you could join us. And last week we had a, a great talk with Jim Shepard. And it was funny. It was pretty timely. Uh, he talked about the NRA situation and then hmm, the other shoe dropped. So yep. if you haven't checked that out, as soon as you're done watching tonight, go check that out on Facebook and YouTube. So we are going to talk about something that, that we'll probably start arguing about this too, but we're going to talk about Red dots. This is. I got, I got one of those. I got one of those. And Roy we has. Have oh, 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 you're going to show that <laughs> oh, one. Oh, wait. No, I have show an the antique other one. one. I have an antique one. This is Good an ultra Lord. dot. Lord. <laughs> I know. Look at that. That is kind of a like the biggie size and not biggie size or something, you know? Yeah. You know what that, that looks, looks like? illegal in 47 states. Yeah. It's not. Whatever this is, is not a suppressed revolver. Okay. Even I know that. <laughs> Although it actually does work a little bit. Uh, it's a heavy barrel gun. It was a PPC gun. I built this in the late 80s. And uh, this is one of the very earliest red dot sights that I could find. And I think I put this together. Oh, God, it was in the maybe early 90s. I can't remember for sure. It seems like it. And uh, there you go. And everyone laughed at me and said, that's stupid. No one's ever going to want to do that, man. <laughs> well, it, it just goes to show you. I mean, I've, I've kind of been saying this is the year of the red dot, but but followed very closely by a disclaimer that they're nothing new on handguns. It's been yeah. decades. No. Well, I got to say before we new for everyday use. Yeah. You know? Before we advance the conversation though, that looks like something from police Academy five, you know? <laughs> well, it kind of was actually Come with me <laughs> or, or total recall. Maybe. Oh, that know. guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's you know, what you, it, it, you need a laser in, on it. In, yeah, we, we, I, and uh, in Handgunner, actually, we, we did a, a one. It was in the 80s, I think it was. And it was that 10-pound laser that they mounted on top of an MP5. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we had those. But, That's you know, cool. when, when I took over Handgunner, and so I was at the SHOT Show, which was probably 2001 or 2002 at the SHOT Show, uh, I was talking with Mickey Fowler, you know, their competitor you shooter. Mm -hmm. And I'd known Mickey for a little while and we were in a booth doing something. I don't remember what. And he went, Hey, let me show you this. And he pulls out a, like an officer's ACP size 1911. And on it was a, a little red dot TV site. And it was one of the very early, like the first one, what was it? Dr. Optic. Is that what it uh, was? I, I can't remember. Yeah. It was a horrific amount of money. It was like $800 in those days. And he had actually had someone cobble it together. And at those times you had to turn it on with a button and you had like about a four hour battery life on it. And so he showed it to me and I picked it up and I looked through it and I couldn't see the red dot, of course, right? I'd never done it before. And he showed me some holster he'd cobbled together and I told him, I said, well, that's stupid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are you going to do with that? And well, he, I'm going to start out the argument and say right off the bat, okay, this is my TMT custom Glock. It, my favorite thin blue line. I've got the Trigicon SRO on it. But let me say, I know, Tom, you're a huge proponent of red dots. And I'm not against them. I just, I'm not comfortable with them. After hundreds of thousands of pistol presentations, I still go for that front sight. So I'm trying to yeah. get there, but uh, I'm still not super comfortable with it. So tell me why I should be super comfortable with but it. You're, for, you're doing it exactly right. Not okay. looking for the dot, going for the front sight. I mean, yeah. that's the whole, once you start looking for the dot, it disappears. There's, there's black holes or something out there that suck up the dot when you start looking for it. No, but seriously, you just forget the dots there. Bring it up, look for your front sight, boom, presto. You know, no, no delay. It's, there's definitely an, an adjustment curve. Yeah. But, but, but why but have you, one? Why have one? That's oh. what I want to know. Ten. Lots Let's make, of reasons. You get to make a case for red dots. Oh, and, and you guys I'll, gang up on me? Is that how absolutely. this is going to work? I, that's well, how it's going to work. I'll make a case for maybe not red dots. <laughs> okay. You know? Let, yeah. Let's talk about let's talk about two different elements of of red dot use. One, simplified sight picture. 
So in the in the classic scenario, you got rear sight, front sight, and target over there somewhere, right? That's three things you're trying to line up all in a micro a micro instant. Is that a thing? Yeah. I don't know, but but I mean, it's it's human eye. Your eye, no matter what it looks like in your brain, can only focus on one of those three things at a time. So we all say focus on the front side, and everything else is a little blurry. The target and the rear sight, right? If it's not blurry, your brain's just switching back and forth between those three objects. But uh, red dot, one thing, the dot is on the target. So you have one simplified focal point. So if you overcome the issue of finding that dot, uh, you've got a much more simplified sight picture. And so go ahead, about, we'll hold on point two okay. for a minute. Yeah. No, well, go ahead, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I was going to say that I've reached that age. I, I've really started noticing this. That front side, even when I'm focused on it real hard, it's yeah. not quite that distinct anymore. Mm, I just was uh, yeah. at a uh, gun site last week and shooting a gun I'd never shot and it had a stock front sight that you know was abysmal, but I, I couldn't see it. So, and, and of course people will get glasses. Well, I will one of these days, but you know, <laughs> I, I still be should bang. be able to see that front, front sight. So that's why I've suddenly realized maybe Maybe I do need to kind of work out this red dot thing. Yeah. Well, you know, Brent, I know you've pointed a gun at bad guys. I certainly have. Tom, you may have. I don't know. But I will say that. Only you. So. Yeah, yeah, only me. I know. There's those That's how you got the job, right? The damn red <laughs> guns he was on. Every time I looked up, he was having one pointed at me. But I can honestly say that I, in all of my years of being pleased, and all the probably hundreds of times, you know, it's not like TV. You pull your gun out a lot you know, yeah. nighttime traffic stops and whatnot. I never remember concentrating on my sights. Uh, mm -hmm. I, my eyes were always on the threat. And, and I, maybe there are superhuman people who really do focus on their front sight when they're, when they're aiming their gun at a bad guy who's holding an eye for a gun. But I'm not one of those because my body just goes binocular vision, focus on the threat, you know, and... And that's where I can see a value of the red dot because it's on the same plane as your, as your threat. And mm -hmm. so I agree with you a hundred percent. I have tried to accomplish that same thing by simply indexing like we all do where you look kind of through the sights, you know, yeah. so you, you index your gun on the target. And if it's out around 10 to 10, 12 yards or 15 yards, you're probably fine. You're going to hit what you're aiming at. But where I worry about the red dot sights, and, and I have some too, like you guys, you know, I've been shooting them a lot now and experimenting with them and, and whatnot. And I, I, I often can't find it, or I find myself slowing down just that two tenths of a second to kind of get that sight picture. And in the real world, you ever watch Jerry Michalik shoot? Jerry points the gun, the instant it's on target, the gun's going off. The instant mm -hmm. it's on target. And in a, in a defensive shooting, the instant you're on target, you need to be shooting, you know, and that two tenths of a second can be life or death, you know? And so okay. I don't know, can you overcome that with practice? I have a question for you. So yeah. you, you, you say you're having a little trouble finding the dot. When you shoot, do you close your eyes? I mean, I know it's gonna be noisy and loud and kind of scary. So I would assume you probably like squinch your eyes shut when you pull the trigger. Is that, <laughs> could that be part of the problem maybe? <laughs> That's funny. Wow. I, know, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, I'll close one eye. And it's like, no, mm -mm, no, not if there's a threat. <laughs> Both eyes are gonna be open. I don't care what you do. Uh, you watch a lot of, go to YouTube and watch videos of cops in in the middle of shootings and you will see that they are looking at the target and both their eyes are open, you know, no matter what's going on. I mean, I like them. I, I think if you get a, a smaller mill dot, you know, like a, a, a three MOA mill dot, as opposed to like a six MOA mill dot, which I think for a defensive gun, it should be a six or an eight, you know, or a yeah, 10. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just a big red dot that you can see out there. But I think for, for a plinking target shooting, hunting handgun, I think it's hard to beat a red dot sight because you've got time to do it. But I, I'm still struggling for it on a defensive gun. I think there are people who can manage it. I'm not there yet. Uh, and I'm just, I'm terrified of that hesitation of, of I can't see my red dot. And then even if you think, well, transition to your iron sights, you've already burned up a half a second or a yeah. second. Yeah. That's, that's know, what I always find myself doing is, is you kind of do that, where's that damn sight? <laughs> And 
you know, I, I do think it's, it's that uh, muscle memory is the term everybody uses. That's not technically correct. But when I bring a, a pistol up, especially, I have, again, hundreds of thousands of presentations and shots. Uh, even though there's a big piece of glass in the way, I still find myself like this one has the big golf ball front sight with the tritium insert. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what I find myself going to. So I'm not saying that I'm against him. I just, it's, it is hard to teach an old dog new tricks. You know, in all seriousness, is it as simple as that? Yeah. In, in all seriousness, I've done a good bit of, um, you know, timing. Cause I wanted to know, you know, what does it take to really acclimate yourself to a red dot? And I found so far, you know, and I'm still working with them. I'm actually just a, a hair slower at contact distances, you know, three to five yards maybe uh, than I am without a red dot. But anything past five yards, I'm actually faster and more accurate. And I think it's that it's mm -hmm. that single plane sight picture, you know, put the dot on the target and you're good to go, you know, and there's a there's a high degree of probability to if that dot's where it's supposed to be and your trigger finger operates correctly, you're going to hit it, right? Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen those. So some tests like that, and you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. The people are even experienced shooters. They seem to be faster up close with irons, but as yeah. soon as it gets out around 12, 15 yards or so, then they're actually faster with the dot sight. I think as long as you're yeah. able to index it, you know, that's the, that's yeah. the big secret to me, you know? Um, a, I think a couple of minutes ago, you, you offered up a great setup uh, for, for my second point, which I want to come back to. And that's that, the natural tendency of us human beings to focus on the target or threat itself. I mean, I think you told a story, was it last week or the week before about all the times you'd, you know, raise your gun and in a stress situation, you remember seeing the sights once, you know, cause you're mm -hmm. focused on the threat naturally. I mean, that's what our, our brains are programmed to do. And that's, uh, that's actually one of the things I like about the red dot is it totally supports that natural tendency to be looking at, you know, kind of like a laser, you know, similar, similar concept there. So well, you know, the I, know, time, I think that's a big benefit. The time I remember looking at my sites, it wasn't, it wasn't in a hurry. It was, there was a, a long period of time. Someone was, was holding a, somebody hostage. And mm -hmm. what my role at the time was, I was had very precise aim and I was resting on a car bumper. So then that was all about the sight picture, you know? Uh, yeah. But other than that, I, I think something that's important because we see, how you can get a, a gun that looks like this from every manufacturer now, you know, and I think just like every new technology, you know, hollow point ammunition, laser sights, you know, uh, frangible ammunition, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think a lot of regular shooters out there who aren't really uh, insiders like we are, will look at this new technology and say, oh, that's going to solve my problems. That's, that's what I need. Yeah. Right. If I buy that, then everything will be OK. And I I would like to bring up the fact that if you buy a red dot site, that's not going to solve all your problems because you, what do people do? They buy the gun. They put a red dot site on it. They load the magazine. They maybe don't even shoot it. And mm -hmm. now they think, OK, I'm safe. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So what do we tell them? How do you get to Carnegie Hall? <laughs> practice, just gonna, practice, you beat me practice. to it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, it's so simple, but that seems to be the hardest thing to get through to folks. Whatever you're using, laser, red dot, iron sights, no sights, behind your back, inverted on your head, just practice it until you can hit. That's that's the simple key. But unfortunately, as Americans, we're so focused on gear, we think that next piece of kit will solve all of our problems in every situation. <laughs> And that's, I think that's the thing, you know, now Tom, who actually has a lot of insight into this, because we've talked about red dot sites before. And so, and I've practiced just what he says, which is just go practice 5,000 presentations. And what I have noticed in, in using this gun is having that big TV set on the top that you can look through, you actually can index it pretty fast, even if you don't yeah. see the red dot. Yeah. In other words, it's it's almost like you you just you put the target in the TV screen, and you're probably if you're out to three to five yards or twelve yards or something, you're probably good enough, and you know yeah. you're going to hit what you're aiming at. 
because I remember when Glocks first came out, they were square in the back and it was kind of the first real square gun that we really ever had. And the first few times I shot them, I thought, well, there's a square out there. You just put the square on wherever you're shooting and, yeah. you know, and there you go. And yeah. so it's a bit like that. Uh, so I would say baby steps, right? That was get, get your red dot, put it on your gun. And now... <laughs> It's kind of like a giant ghost ring uh, on a rifle, you know, with the method you just described. Yeah. You know, and one thing that uh, naysayers on the red dot will always say, well, it's electronic and it can fail and all that stuff. I got to say in, cause we are, you know, lucky we've got all different kinds of brands and I've not carried it as much as, you know, it's not like my everyday carry gun, but other than uh, some of the early EOTEX, which they admit, you know, kind of had a little battery problem, I've not had any issues with them. And, you know, we all understand, you know, co-witnessing now. So what would you say to somebody who says, well, that's, that's just an extra piece of kit that can fail in the moment of crisis? I would say you need to turn off your electricity <laughs> and call the power company right now and turn it off. Because think about this, what would happen if you neglected to pay your electric bill, right? The power would go off and then what would you do, right? You'd right. be stuck. I mean, you know, I, I kind of, people say, well, the battery may run out and the light is like, well, we're adults. We can change the battery once a year. I mean, uh, this guy, this is a Trigicon. This will run per specs nonstop for about three years. Yeah. So every New Year's day, every one year, I put a new battery. What are they like? A dollar ninety-seven, you know, for yeah. one of the batteries that drops into this guy. If that, yeah. like, <laughs> never have to worry about it, you know. Is uh, that the I'll SRO? Hmm? Uh, no, this is this is an RMR. Oh, okay. The okay. old, the original. Oh, I see now. So yeah. I'm kind of jonesing for an SRO like you have there. That got nice big, nice big TV window, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's huge. You can you can see all kinds of stuff going on downrange. You know about. A year ago, I got a, a spam email and it was from a company in China. Maybe you guys have gotten some like this. And it's basically, this was a manufacturing company and they offer things in our industry. Uh, and this company op or offers offered electronic goods. So they did flashlights that you could have OEM branded to your name, you know, Roy's flashlight company. <laughs> and one of the things they offered were red dot sites and they were just like small looking little red dot sites that looked just like, you know, the ones that we all have here. And what I was amazed at is that they had bulk rates for sales. And that if, if I bought 500 of these red dot sites and they said, you know, two year battery life, four mil dot, you know, it had all the kind of stats that they have on all of those they were $17 and if I bought that wow. many. And so then I started looking around and I went on Amazon and I went on eBay and I went on some other places and I found the identical site for sale. And some of them weren't even rebranded anything. It still had the, you know, whatever brand mark they had on them. And, uh, and they were being sold for anywhere from say, $39 up to like $119, you know, and from some companies that were named enough that you might recognize them. Uh, now, so obviously these are entry level sites. Mm -hmm. And, but I, I would like to put a caution out though, because I've had some of those sites and they do tend to malfunction or break sometimes. Mm -hmm. Good point. You know, they just, yeah, you just pick them up and the dot isn't there, <laughs> you yeah. know? And, but I didn't realize that until I saw that it was a $17 site and that was shipped here and they made their profit. So <laughs> who knows what it costs to manufacture $2, you know, yeah. most manufacturing is about six times your, their, their wholesale price is about six times. And so, yeah, it's costing them $3. And so if you, do you really want to, risk your life on a three dollar electrical device are are you sure that they didn't just put a little red tiny red sticker on a piece of plexiglass there <laughs> i know probably yeah. yeah it was like what i don't know you know uh, i will say though that you could actually see the difference in the optics i mean obviously these ones that we have they're very high quality it's a very clear you know tv screen you know for lack of a better phrase the the dots are bright and sharp 
you know, uh, my early site, this early alter dot here, <clears throat> it's really funny. The, the red dot is this sort of blurry splotch of red in the middle, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. shaped like a kidney, you know? Uh, well, if we're talking about price point guns, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this is my red dot trainer. It is a Taurus TX-22, 22 long rifle, and it's got a uh, True Glow, and I can't remember the, the model number, but I got this um, because it's, it's, again, price point kind of thing. It's not super expensive, but I can go out and shoot the stuffings out of it for not very much money, yeah. and it's really been good practice for me. Um, I was just sitting here thinking, tomorrow I got to get back out to the range and shoot this thing. Now the TX-22, I'm a big, I actually purchased this, you know, they say, well, they always send gun writers all these free guns. No. They sent this one, but they wanted it back. I actually purchased it. I now, bought mine. Yeah. yeah. It, it's the only thing I'll say about it is it's a little finicky about ammo, but so are most semi-automatic 22s. But if you get the yeah. right brand that the gun likes, and I forget which one it is off the top of my head, but it'll run like a house of fire all day and you can shoot. My wife loves this gun. And, you know, she has some eye problems too. And she was like, well, can I carry that? And I said, well, let's, let's keep you carrying the nine millimeter, but yeah, let's go out and shoot this thing a lot more. So there yeah. are ways to, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a black striker fired kind of gun. So uh, my theory is, you know, go out and shoot this thing a lot. And then I will get more comfortable with my defensive caliber pistols. Is there anything more fun than a 22 pistol? I mean, no. seriously, <laughs> I've been shooting for decades and I still yep. will always take the opportunity to shoot a 22 yep. pistol. And this TX-22, it feels like a real gun. You know, it's mm -hmm. just everything about, that's what I liked. Um, nothing against any of the other 22 pistols, but this one feels like your nine millimeter, you know, carry gun. So yeah. I was pleased with it. So that's I my, think that that's was cool. That was the whole point, blood. I think, of that gun. Uh, yeah. You know. you know what I have found red dot sights are good for? And I've done it with uh, with this ancient revolver <laughs> revolver one before I got the more modern ones. Is that if you have a new shooter, and have you ever been teaching somebody to shoot and they're just they're really just not getting it? You know, they're not getting the trigger press, they're not getting the sight picture, they're jerking the trigger, they're you just you have a little trouble getting them settled in, kind of. Well, I have actually found is give them a gun that has a red dot sight on them, mm -hmm. put the target at about five or seven yards, and then just say, all I want you to do is put the little dot on the target and then squeeze the trigger. And so now that takes the sight picture element out of the picture yeah. and you can yeah. just work on trigger squeeze. And so now they're only thinking about one thing. And boy, I'll tell you, it's been a really useful tool because their eyes light up because they're getting hits, you know, and, uh, yeah. and as, as you, the groups are spread around, you can help them identify what they're going doing with the trigger and whatnot. And then once you sort of get that under control, now give them back the gun with the iron sights. And it's 100% successful. It's really, really handy. And I would encourage people to do that. It's, you know, don't buy a red dot sight thinking that this is going to solve all your problems. Buy a red dot sight and use it as a training tool for a while. And then as Tom says, you know, do your 5,000 presentations. And if you get to where you're really comfortable, then okay, that's something else. But I might, I might add one, one thing to that thousands of presentations is do them looking and look for the front sight. Don't, don't look for the dot, look for the front sight, you know, and, and with the correct alignment, it's, it's just going to be there, but it has they, to be, you know, if, they you're, all if the gun's shooting to the same point through the sights or the red dot, you're going to see it when you line up the front sight. You know. Do they do they all index? Because I some guns that I've had, the red dot will be above the front sight. Yeah. Yet it hits the same point of impact that that yeah. the sights hit, which yeah, I've never a really offset, understood that. Yeah. Is it? A little offset like a laser. Hey Brent, will you do me a favor? Will you hold up your two guns? Oh, is he going to make a, fun? There's of an you? important point. Like turn them sideways, so we can see that. Yeah. Now on the frames of those sights, this is something that's. I don't know, maybe you guys have um, run into this as well. Like I've got, you know, the RMR here, which is a great sight. I mean, it's, it's rock solid. You can hammer nails with this thing, but it's got a really thick frame around the, the TV mm -hmm. window, right? Yeah. It makes a difference. I mean, those ones like the newer style, the newer generation have very slender frames that don't block your vision as much and aren't as distracting as you're kind of looking, looking through to target. Yep. Something to consider. I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen a struggled with that either but hmm. i'm sitting here looking right now 
<laughs> I mean, if you look, it's it's a very thin, and I, I'm saying that's a good thing. You know, there's yeah. much less getting in the way of your vision. Well, you know, they're certainly getting popular. Um, I went out to our range the other day. I was going to use it. I get to use the police range, which is wonderful. Um, they had a, a, an out-of-state instructor in there, and there was 12 people in the class, and eight of them were shooting red dots. And then, like really? I said, I was at Gunsight last week. They had their very first red dot only 250, so the entry-level you know, week long pistol class, and it was all red dots, and and it was highly successful. So, um, Roy, you and I, I guess we need to to modernize a little bit because uh, that may be the wave of the future. <laughs> I've heard that before. Huh? Hollow point <laughs> ammunition? No way. <laughs> well, there's there's one reason behind all this. Think about all the new pictures you're seeing online about the tactical Delta Ninjas grimacing and crushing the grips while holding a red dot pistol. I mean, do you need any other reason than that? This is true. <laughs> right. And if you can do position Sewell, <laughs> human dead sexy ward. Or the, we don't or need car, to go there right the, now. The car, uh, <laughs> dancer. It's a shame though, that dare I call them influencers that, you know, people who are in the business to make money being an influencer are affecting people's decisions, you know, to buy these products, thinking, I think they kind of hint at the fact that this is going to solve all your problems. And I think if one of the services we could do is just help to keep people grounded a little bit and just say, always look at that stuff with a wary eye, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, not to get off on the influencer tangent, but uh, you and I were talking about a, a certain person that we dealt with. And you said to me something that really stuck. You said, the world just began seven years ago for this guy. He had not even shot before that. And now he's got a following and he's, you know, I'm not saying you have to be military cop competition shooter, but just with seven years under your belt and you're telling literally tens of thousands of people how it should be. I, good luck with that. That's, that's my thought, you know, how, how many years between all of us? And I think we would all be the first to say, I've not figured all of it out by any stretch of the imagination. Well, we got my seven, but, and, and thanks for talking about me there. <laughs> yeah, and, sorry. Uh, plus whatever you guys have, right? <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that's a good lesson too, is that there, there are people with seven years in grade who probably know about whatever it is they're teaching, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I think people have to then balance that with, don't just look at that and say, well, I saw it on YouTube. So it's true. So look at that and I'll find other people, maybe old guys like us, you know, maybe other younger people. And if there's a common theme amongst them all, then, you know, oh, okay, well then that's probably true. You know, cause yeah. I think we're all three saying kind of the same things about the red dots. I mean, Tom, who I would say is probably the strongest proponent and arguably probably has the most experience with them between us. Uh, still says, well, no, you have to practice with it, you know? Yep. And so, and we all seem like to struggle. scopes on rifles, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many decades ago was that heresy to put a glass object on a working rifle? You know, yeah. you're going to what? You're going to put glass up there? You know? Well, and it's the same thing though. Somebody buys a real high end scope and they put it on the gun. Well, this thing just doesn't shoot. Maybe it's the loose nut behind the gun and not the high dollar optic. <laughs> <laughs> how long serious question how long do you think it took i've never really gone back and looked at this from for the world to transition from open sights on rifles to scopes i mean now it's it's rare to find a rifle without a scope on it it was, was that a to decades me it was, long process i don't know oh About yeah it 50 was in, years probably yeah yeah it was in the late 50s when it really started to become pretty much common you know yeah. when Leupold and Redfield and Weaver and those guys came out. Because remember, they had they had telescopic sights, no red dots, but they had telescopic <laughs> sights in the Civil War and even yeah. before that. Yeah. You know, uh, Mike Venturino still, I think, competes with uh, optics, uh, single-shot yeah. black powder rifles. Yeah. You, yep. know? you know, I just had a sudden thought that'll blow your mind. Maybe <laughs> we're influencers. No, uh, shh. Watch That's your mouth out with soap. Yeah. <laughs> if, Let me do it. Well, there I was. There I was. <laughs> there I was. I, <laughs> you know, I think we're all really concerned about making sure that what we try to say to everybody is truthful. And it's based on our real world experience as opposed to something we, you know, 
saw on a YouTube video, although this yeah. will end up on YouTube eventually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and just the whole idea that, uh, you know, we're trying to be truthful. We're trying to share some experience. We're quick to say that we don't know it all. And contrary to what some people may think, we're not being paid to pump this gun at all. Like I said, I bought it, you know, so I believe in it. And when people ask me what, you know, what's a good way to train up with red dot Buy this, you know, that may not yeah. solve all your problems, but at least in my experience, it solved my problem. You just cost me some money because I do not, <laughs> I mean, I have like a, I have a, a Smith and Wesson victory with a red dot in it, but what mm -hmm. I don't have is kind of a mirror image of a carry gun with the red yep. dot. So now Thanks a lot for uh, <laughs> violating my checkbook on that because I want one really bad. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, and mine is mine's run like a top. I've probably got oh I don't know three or four thousand rounds through it. I mean, yeah. it just lays here with a pile of twenty two ammo next to it and and shoot it a lot. Well, you know, I think if 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 really if all it was about for us were helping our clients sell red dot sites, we would all be here going, well, you have to have one of these because if you don't have one of these, you're not cool and you're this and this and it's going to do everything in the world for you. But if, if you think about it, we've just brought up some pretty good reasons not to use a red dot site for some things. And then, and if you do want to use a red dot site, the challenges that there'll be to them. And I don't think any advertisers or any manufacturers, you know, would begrudge us the fact that we're being truthful. Yeah. Well, of course, some like, might. You know? <laughs> I was going like to say, everything. maybe not everyone. Yeah. You got to try it yourself. You got to, you know, evaluate the pros and cons for what you do, for how you see things, for how good your eyes are, for all, all of these factors, you know? Well, the, the term I always use is your mileage may vary. Yeah. <laughs> your mileage. It's like, I hate to think of the guy that goes out and buys a modern polymer pistol buys the most exotic multiple level expanding pre-fragmented titanium ammunition nuclear tips puts, nuclear tip puts on a uber the top thousand dollar red dot sight a two thousand lumen flashlight on the end of his gun with a green and a red and a uv laser and then puts it next to his bed and thinks that now he's okay yeah because you because that's not how it works you know well, I'm sure you've seen it in training. Uh, somebody shows up with, you know, a piece that I couldn't afford. And then they proceed to really stink the place up because they put all their money into that cool gun. And, and yeah, it's got a certain cool factor behind the line. But when you got to actually press the trigger, they fail miserably. And um, <laughs> I would love to share some experiences, but many of these people <laughs> are friends. But it's like, uh, you know, Maybe if you bought some practice ammo, I'm just saying it's a crazy notion, but a little practice ammo probably wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> well, that's that's it, the beauty of that 22. I, I'm not going to let that go, man. That's, that's awesome. That's he's the, easy. You that's know? the tip of the day right there. <laughs> you know, uh, the, that being a cheapskate, our, our industries and shooters in general can, they're almost like they're at either extreme. They either don't mind spending $5,000 for a scope or they begrudge spending thirty nine dollars for a scope at you know at, at Target or something. Yeah. When I guess Target sold scopes, uh, a, a good illustration of that is I was at Thunder Ranch years ago, and there was this this geeky, dirty guy, and he he you know he had a five dollar holster and the worst reloaded ammunition you could imagine, and a cheap, <laughs> crappy gun, and it was just and it was constant problems, right? And so he was, he was fighting with a magazine and Clint walked up and said, what's the problem? And he said, well, I think there's a problem with my magazine. It always keeps jamming the gun. And Clint said, you want me to fix that for you? And I would have, I was standing there and, and he went, he went, yeah. And so Clint <laughs> took it, looked at it, reared back and threw it over the berm, the target <laughs> berm. <laughs> yep. And he said, he said, there, it's fixed. And then he crunched on <laughs> the gravel onto the next shooter. But I thought that was a really good lesson about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. so well, I've always said the mark of a professional is good quality, but not flashy gear. You don't have to buy the most expensive, but just good quality that will uh, solve your problem. Don't go cheapest. You don't have to go most expensive, but uh, competent to me, competency is far cooler than any of the other stuff. I know that's, that's kind of heresy in our American world, but uh, 
one of my favorite stories, I got a buddy who was one of the first SWAT commanders in a major metropolitan city, and he wears bib overalls and a John Deere cap most days, but he's one of those guys, he can shoot the lights out of any weapon system. He probably doesn't own all that many guns by, you know, some guy's standards, but he can use every one of them really effectively. And not only that, he's, he's a mean SOB. I mean, you'd think he looks like grandpa, but if you ever – tried to challenge him on it, it probably wouldn't go so good for you. To me, those guys are the coolest of all. You know, the old World War II vet who can still shoot his 45 and, you know, shoot a fly off the target at 15 or 20 yards. That to me is cool. Not, not sweaty mission grimaces. I know I'm <laughs> speaking heresy here, but. You know. yeah. So don't, don't think putting a red dot sight in your gun is going to solve all your problems. What should we leave them with? Can I'll add, I'll say one don't pay $19 for your red dot sight. I mean, as yeah. tempting as it is, yeah. don't, unless you're going to put it on your BB gun or something like that. You know, I, I mean, I'm thinking a good, decent quality, read the reviews. You know, if people are saying, Oh, I got it. It broke in a year. I'm returning it. Don't buy that. But yeah. you know, like, as Brent says, buy something decent quality, because if you like it, you are going to upgrade later on. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So, Tom, what advice can you give people? With I, one thing we hadn't covered yet is think about what you're going to use it for. And what I mean by that is uh, a red dot that you're going to use on a carrier defensive gun, I believe, my opinion, it needs to be some type of always-on technology, mm -hmm. period. No button required Good to point. turn it on because you're going to yeah. forget. And if you yeah. have a manual safety, then now you're talking about multiple steps to be able to fire, aim and fire that gun. So... If it's for defensive use at all, either get an always on like Trujicon does that or the SIG Romeos, uh, like this Romeo One Pro is motion activated. And that's how it, you know, that's how it gets five years of battery life. It's when it's laying on a table or in the safe, it's off. But the minute it moves, that that dot is, you know, illuminated again. So now if it's for range use or competition or practice, knock yourself out, you know, get one with an on off switch and all that stuff if you want. No, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Well, before I give my uh, tip, I would say, Tom, you know, you're going to buy a gun now, but I learned a, a, a great idea from you is January 1, New Year's Day, after you get up late because you were up late, go change the batteries and everything. And I already do that with my smoke detectors, which everybody should yeah. do, but that's a good time to remember that. So January 1, for all of us now, will be battery day. Replace the battery and all your stuff, your life support equipment. So your, your guns, the lasers, the sights, the smoke detector, anything that might save your life. So that's, that's a great thing. But my tip is the one I always give, which is practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. Just get out and make good practice and then practice some more. It's a perishable skill. So you're here. Harumph. You're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, well, here. before we bail out of here though, Roy, you've got that uh, red dot sided pistol, but you didn't get the fox. Oh, man. A fox got two of our chickens the other day, that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, we are both gunning for him right now. That is, <laughs> if there's ever a paranoid fox right now, he's the one. But, yeah. and interesting, we had it on the, the security cameras and we saw the drama unfold. And old Blondie, that big stocky chicken we had, held her own. I mean, she held him off for quite a while and then they, they both disappeared around and then Blondie sleeps with the fishes now somewhere, I guess. So yeah, wish I would have had my red dot pistol in my hand. Yeah, if you had a red dot, that wouldn't have happened. See, so. it would have solved my problems. Yeah. <laughs> well, great. Well, you know, I hope, hope everybody's gotten something out of our discussion of red dot sites and there's a lot more on our websites and in our magazines. So I would be remiss if I didn't say check out gunsmagazine.com and americanhandgunner.com. And we also sell some really cool books. Tom, you want to talk about those? Yeah, man. DIY guns is uh, available now on amazon.com, both print and uh, Kindle ebook edition. If you're an ebook reader, knock yourself out. Uh, Amazon.com, just search for DIY guns. Give you all Very sorts of helpful tips about uh, modifying, enhancing, tweaking, fixing, uh, fixing your own firearms. So check it out. And I got to say, they're really cool, even though they were Tom's project. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, dog, we have the Old West pending of. too, don't we? Is the Old West book out? Old pretty West soon? is coming out shortly. So cool. we just put the finishing touches on it. So that'll be out post haste. That's a fun. And, you know, one thing I didn't think about, we didn't discuss beforehand, but the, the kitty's kind of out of the bag. 
Um, we've got some big news coming up. It's not official yet. So our Gun Cranks Live viewers will be the first to officially hear it from us. American Cop dot com is coming back we just hired denny hansen uh many of you might know him from he was the editor of squat magazine which i wrote for for many years and he was the editor like 32 years and uh we we hired denny so he's bringing all his experience and uh he'll be kind of riding shotgun over over that and some other stuff for us so i'm really excited about it uh, uh i'm really excited about it we all are so that's going to be really cool and probably here in about a month it'll officially uh be new and improved and wonderful. Cool. I was so pleased that Danny accepted, yeah. you know, to come to work. Yeah, he's a, a sterling guy. And if you're not familiar with American Cop, go to AmericanCopMagazine.com and check exactly. out what we have there. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Well, it's been great talking about red dots and we'll have to come up with a, another great topic for next week because truly this stuff, we kind of fly by the seat of our pants. So uh, I, I think Hopefully that adds to the realism of this whole thing instead of being completely scripted and all that. But uh, we, we are getting a lot of good feedback. You can reach us at editor at AmericanHandGunner.com and editor at GunsMagazine.com and let us know what you guys like. And if you don't like something, send it to Tom and tell him all about it. So <laughs> <Thanks>. anyway, <laughs> on behalf of the Gun Cranks Live, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat here with Roy Huntington, our publisher, and Tom McHale, editor of American Handgunner. Now, I think it's time to uh, call it a day and uh, plan go shoot tomorrow. So we'll see you guys next week, 8 p.m. Eastern time on all these social media channels. Night. Good night. Good night.